are in lockdown. Don't venture away from your radio. Don't go outside. Don't get infected. Welcome to Quarantine. Quarantine Radio Theater brings you new productions of old-time radio as well as new productions of original material. So, dim the lights, sit back, and close your eyes. We are in quarantine. Hello, and welcome to Quarantine Radio Theater. This is Kelly Hoagland, the director of this episode. We here at Quarantine Radio Theater are excited to return to the gritty world of noir. This time, we join one of noir's most famous detectives, Sam Spade. Tonight's story, The Dead Duck Caper, originally aired on February 2nd, 1947, with the grizzled detective voiced by Howard Duff. John, our hard-boiled hero, as he seeks out his close confidant and secretary, Effie Perrin. The door opens and Spade calls, Effie? Effie! Effie! I waited. Say what you have to say and I'll go. You've been through a tough time, sweetheart. Well, you didn't make it any easier. Do you think it was a cakewalk for me? You think my nerves are made of rubber? You have no nerves. You're just a cold, callous... Shut up! Old detective. You're going to listen to me. You're going to sit still, not talk, and listen. <laughs> I... When I'm finished, you can say goodnight or goodbye. But first, you're going to listen to me. You remember how it started yesterday evening. You told me it was your mother's birthday. You were giving a party and you said you wanted me to come. I tried to beg off being no social butterfly, but mom would be hurt, you said. And so the next thing I knew, there I was at your house surrounded by two dozen strangers, ten gallons of lemonade, and your mother. I've been wanting to have a talk with you, Mr. Spade, about Effie. I can't think of a nicer subject, Mrs. Perrine. Effie is just so devoted to you, Mr. Spade. Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, I'm very devoted to Effie, too, Mrs. Perrin. What I mean is... Mother? Mother? Oh, Mother, I think we should do something. The party's dying on its feet. Uh, you want me to spike the lemonade, Effie? Just so happens that I have here in my pocket a bottle of, uh... I have a wonderful idea. It'll make the party one big happy family. You just wait and see now. Oh, quiet, quiet, everybody. What's she up to? Some kind of game, probably. Mother's great on games. Oh, that's all I need. Uh, your attention, please. Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, there's Miss Brent going out. Uh, Miss Brent, oh, Miss Brent. Yeah, Mrs. Perrin? Won't you join the party? I'd love to, but I have an appointment. Oh, what a shame. Oh, do stay. Thank you. Some other time. Oh, Lola's so nice. She rents the sitting room upstairs. I wish she could have stayed. Well, I'll explain the game now. Mrs. Perrin, I think I'll stay after all. Oh, how nice. So you've brought a gentleman friend. Yeah. Yeah, he... This is Marty. Marty. Oh, well, Marty, I'd like to have you meet a... Lola sat down and crossed her legs at me. On her left knee, where I would have preferred to see a dimple, I saw a tattoo mark. 
Her gentleman friend Marty was a small, stocky guy, all teeth and New York tie. He shook hands all around, and it felt like the paw of a stale stiff. And this is Mr. Spade. He's a private detective Effie works for. Lola's from Kansas City, Mr. Spade. Oh? She's waiting for her husband to return from overseas. I'm glad he's coming home safely. Where is he stationed? Uh, Japan. Yeah, he's... Uh, now, quiet, everybody. Quiet. We're going to play charades. Oh, it's very simple. Now, you see, I'm the captain of Team A. Now, uh, Dr... Uh, Dr. Burston. Oh, he's so clever. He can be the captain of Team B. Now, dear, quiet, everybody. Now, we'll both select the members of our teams. And then, um, each of you will write something on a slip of paper. Like what? Like what? Uh, well, write a quotation or a phrase, uh, the title of a song, whatever you like. Doesn't matter. Just something interesting and clever. Then I think, yes, yes, I think I've got it. You act out what you've written all in pantomime. No words can be used, although sounds are permitted. <sighs> Dears, you must listen to me or we can't play the game. What? What? Now, you can't play unless you know how. And then your team must guess what is written on the paper. And you act it out. Now, any questions? How many words can we put? Oh, <laughs> any amount of words. Any? Oh, that's fine. No, not over ten, though. That's too long, yes? Now, everybody ready? <laughs> This is your charade, Mr. Spade. Yeah, but I got one. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Please don't lose the charade I gave you. And with that, she lost herself in the crowd. I pushed the paper she handed me into my pocket without looking at it. Her gentleman friend, Marty, the little character with the New York tie, was out in the center of the room acting out his charade. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. He flapped his arms up and down, quacked twice, and rolled over on his back. Nobody got it, so he did it again. Oh, now, wait a minute. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Wait a minute now. A pigeon. Duck. Dead duck. Dead duck. Oh, what a great guess. Quack, Dead duck. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Now, Team A scores a win there. Let's go on, please. Mr. Mr. Dead Duck, we guessed you, so will you please get up now? We'll go on to the... <gasps> Sam! Sam, he's dead! And he certainly was. A deader duck I'd never seen. I bent to him and his lips were turning blue. Somebody had spiked his last drink with a jigger of poison. One hour later, Dundee and the homicide boys, including the medic, had taken the stiff downtown. No one could identify him. Lola Brent had brought him to the party, but she'd taken a powder. You and Mom were kind of shaky, so I decided to spend the night on the sofa in the living room. Only used up about three hours of it when I heard the front door open. I figured it was Lola. I got to my feet, crossed to the hall, and found myself staring into the biggest 45 I ever saw. Where's the duck? Who? <laughs> he wants to know who, Poopy. Look, we don't want no trouble. You're protecting this juke, okay? All we want is the duck. Try Walt Disney. <clears throat> I should have known they had no sense of humor. The butt of the gun caught me behind the left ear. That's where it usually catches me. I don't know how much more sleep I packed away until I felt you shaking me. Sam! Sam! Huh? What? Effie? Sam, they took Mom! Those gunmen! They took Mom! What happened? They came into our bedroom. Yeah? They hit me. What? Right here. Yeah? And then they grabbed Mama. 
They wanted the duck. Huh? Sam, what were they saying? They took Mom out with them. I'll call the police. Effie, no, no. But they've got Mom. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sam, they took my mother with them. <laughs> no, no, we can't call the police, Effie, not yet. They, they want something. They want the duck. They think Mom has it. She's safe for a while, but if we call the police, she's... Oh, Sam! Sam, what shall we do? What shall we do? Keep our fingers crossed and play the rest of the caper by ear. So, you promised you wouldn't call the police until I gave you the nod. I went out to buzz the town. I figured it was an out-of-state mob, probably New York. The Gunsels were after the duck. Well, that made no sense. They thought I was the muscle for the juke joint. I hustled over to Jenny the juke. If she didn't know the score, nobody would. Her place was dark, but finally she opened up and led me into the rear. When I mentioned the duck, she shut down tighter than a clam in December. It's blisters, Sam. Blisters, I tell ya. This ain't only the local law. This is the feds. Go away, Sam. My joint ain't jukin' for the duration. Listen, Jenny, there's an out-of-state mob. They put the arm on my secretary's mother. She don't know the time of day. They pulled the wrong feather. I don't hear a word you say, Sam. They're mixed up in the juke joint grift. You know who they are. Where's the duck, Jenny? Sam, you're winging in the breeze. Sam... Now give me your rundown, Jenny, or I'll tear your ears off. I want that old woman back safe. You can't muscle me, Sam. Do you know why? Because you'll tear my ears off, and that's where you'll stop. Huh. That's where they begin. Okay, Jenny, okay. One thing. Can you get word to them? Maybe. Will you try? Maybe. Tell them I've got the duck. I'll deal for the old woman. I'll try. Go back to your office. If I can throw a little weight, you'll get a call. If I can't, well, you can come back for my ears. And when I got back to the office, I had you on my hands. And that was no rest cure. But I can't just sit here. Do something. We've got to sit and wait. Maybe they're killing her. Maybe... Oh, Sam, please call the police. No, we got to sweat it out. I can't. I can't go on like this. <clears throat> Mr. Spade, is it? Who sent you? Jenny the Duke. What's your name? I'm Dennis O'Rourke. I'm here to talk about the duck. Good enough. Come into my office. Effie, you wait out here. But Sam... Wait here, I said. Sit down. Thank you. Kindly. I'm a lawyer, Mr. Spade. I'm here to represent my client. What's his name? John Doe. Mm-hmm. Jane Doe's big brother? <laughs> my client has been led to believe that you are prepared to, uh, produce the duck. Is that correct? More or less. What's it worth to your client? My client is willing to trade the old woman for the duck. <laughs> you go back and tell your client I'm a big boy now. I, uh, I don't understand, Mr. Spade. This town is loaded with old women. All I have to do is walk up and down Market Street. But there's only one duck. There must be a misunderstanding. Then let me put it to you straight. I've got the duck. Where? Oh, don't be cute. Your client wants the duck, okay? For 50 G's. $50,000, is it? Yeah, things are high all over. Yeah, but the old woman, this Mrs. Perrine, aren't you interested in... Uh... Now listen, you can do whatever you like about the old woman. So you got an old woman. Get rid of her however you want. That's your service. What's important is that you want the duck... I want fifty grand. Do we play? Well, now, I... Wait. Effie! I thought we had an audience the other side of the door. Sam, what were you... Shut up! Save it, Effie. This is business. Easiest money of the season. Well, if you're ready to talk business, we'll go and talk to my client, Mr. Spade. Now. Then let's go. Sam, what I heard you say. You didn't mean it. Oh, Sam. You've known me a long time, Effie, but maybe you don't know me. 
The car that drove us down the peninsula was brand new. I could tell by the way the upholstery smelled and the careful way the driver handled it. O'Rourke, the lawyer, sat up front and I sat in the back, squeezed between two gonifs. The gun muzzles stuck in my ribs told me all I needed to know about them. The rest of it I had to guess at. Time is hard to judge when you're blindfolded, but there's only one main road out of San Francisco by land, and I know the towns and stops along it fairly well. About 20 miles out of the city, the car turned off the main highway onto a gravel road. Five minutes later, the blindfold came off, but the fog was so thick, I still couldn't see much. The Ganos pushed me ahead of him into a shack that looked like a summer vacation cottage with a sign over the door that said, Bide a wee. A sallow, mean-looking little man with a heavily scarred face met us at the door. On his right arm, just above the wrist, was tattooed a small picture of a mallard duck. He glared at me, then at O'Rourke. How come? I told you, don't come back here without it. Heaven be my witness, Ducky. I did my utmost. Huh? It seems, Ducky, that Mr. Spade is interested in money. What money? Did you tell him we got the old lady? I did, sir. I'm afraid we've misjudged Mr. Spade. In short, Ducky, Mr. Spade is not in the least altruistic. What does he want? <laughs> you had better tell him, Mr. Spade. 50,000 now. Another 50 G's when I deliver the duck. A hundred G's is a lot of cash. You can afford it. Bugsy, bring in the old lady. Okay. In here, sister. I do wish that you'd explain to Mr. Morton. Sam, well, it's high time. Do you know these men? This is a cute trick, Ducky, but it's going to cost you. The lady spoke to you, Speed. I told you, it's going to cost you letting her see me here. The longer she stands here staring at me, the more it's going to cost you. Sam, what is it? If I've done anything to make you angry... Get her out of here! Mr. Morton oh, said there, you were going to call now, me, mother. Sam. I, Come along I now. don't understand. Don't you I, worry I don't. about a thing. I want to go home. Well, of course, dear. I really want to go home. Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Spade. You've broken that old lady's heart. Stop drooling. Watch your talk, Sonny. I ain't any sweet old lady. I don't have to use words when I talk to you, Ducky. You won't do anything to me because I got something you need. Okay, okay, a hundred G's. Paid the way you said price has gone up. Huh? Kidnapping's a federal rap. I'm not taking any part of it. She don't know she was snatched. Uh, we told her we were from the DA's office. Keeping her on ice as a witness. She'll find out different. I don't plan on settling down here. Oh, that's fine, but I have to go on living in this town. That old hen alive and clucking, it won't be easy. You mean you want we should knock off that sweet old lady? You're a little slow, Ducky, but you'll get there. I've met some lousy low-down heels in my day, but you're the lousiest, lowest... <clears throat> go on, go on, I can take more of it at these prices. We ain't doing your dirty laundry, see? Then it's no dice. My price is a hundred grand. And what if I say it's no? Then I turn the duck over to the federal boys. In that case, I don't care if the old lady stays alive or not, because I'll be playing their game. Either you're in or you're out. Think it over, Morton. When you decide, you'll know where to reach me. Yeah, we'll know where to reach you. They drove me back to town blindfolded. When they let me out of the car, all I could see without the blindfold was the corner of Post and Carney. When a streetcar came along, I tossed a coin whether to get in or lie down on the tracks and let it run over me came up heads, so I, well, I tossed it again, and I got on instead. I fished in my pocket for a slug and came up with the folded slip of paper. It was the one Lola had handed me at Mrs. Perrin's birthday party when they were passing out the parts for that screwy charade game. 
I unfolded it and glanced at it. Then I read it over very carefully. The writing was hard to make out, but what I could read of it said, help me, that man Marty has followed me here to kill me. If I get out of here alive, Maxie's arcade, I have a hundred dollars. Well, I got off at Columbus and walked up to the international settlement where Maxie's arcade does business. It's what they used to call a penny arcade before inflation set in. I dropped a nickel in a fortune telling machine. Worried, perplexed? Know thyself and your problems will vanish. A card came out that said, you're of a naturally deceitful and secretive character. Disloyalty brings its own punishment. It's never too late to mend. I tore up the card, kicked the machine, and that's when I saw it. It's a narrow little booth muffled in drapes, and the sign over it said, Salty Hawkins, Tattoo Artist. The card pinned to the curtain showed some typical tattoo designs, anchors, mermaids, fancy initials, but one had a hand-drawn picture pasted over it. It was a mallard duck, the same tattoo mark I'd noticed on Ducky Morton's wrist. I pulled the curtain aside and went in. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, mate? What do you know about the duck? Old in your drib, mate. There's no freshwater birds hereabouts. How about the new one you just put on your cart outside? Oh, that one, eh? Uh, now whereabouts? On the arm. Two, three-color job. On her leg. Whereabouts? Her left knee. Well, that's right, mate. It was on her knee. Did she have you remove it for her? Right as the star, mate. Know why? Look, mate, if I did, I wouldn't be telling strangers about her secrets. Take it easy, mate. All right, where is she? I haven't got time to take it easy, mate. Talk. Sure, hot-tempered gent, aren't you? Come on, come on. I was going to tell you anyhow. She says to me, she says, if a man comes in... All right, shut up. Where is she? Right in the back room, mate. Who is it? Spade, open up. Hello, Lola. Finally worked out your charade. Come on in, quick. Were you followed here? I wouldn't have come if I had been. How much do you know? They want you a hundred thousand bucks worth. You tell me why. You've seen Ducky Morton? Yeah. Didn't he tell you? I want to hear it from you. Don't believe anything he says. More than a year and he didn't give even give me the time of day. He says he wants me back that way. He's a liar. How does he want you back? With rigid mortis he wants me back. I'm taking an awful chance opening up to you like this. Let him catch me. They'd only kill me. Humane. You was to let the DA people get at me. Ducky's mob would lay for me then. If it took him years and... Aw, oh, gee, you don't know, Sam. They... They torture girls. What that mob would do to me if I had to testify against him? Okay, I take your word for that. Who are these DA people you're talking about? You never heard of Ducky Morton before? I heard his name. I thought he was knocked over when they had the big racket busting show in New York years ago. Yeah, I guess a lot of people thought that. It wasn't healthy to mention Ducky's name. What was the racket? Juke joints. Giving Mickey's the servicemen, rolling him. That's why the feds are helping the DA's office. They arrested hundreds of girls and held them as material witnesses. Only they want me most of all. I work the joints, you see. And then I was Ducky's girlfriend during the duration. I think you'd only be too happy to tell him what you know about him in court. Aw, oh, gee. I would if I did, but you don't know. The DA's office says they'll give a girl protection, but how can they? What are you doing in San Francisco? Running away. Had my ticket on a boat. I was going to Honolulu, but they was watching the boats. So then I found this room out in Oakland. Mrs. Perrin was real nice to me. I never thought they'd find me there. And then Marty showed up. Honest, it was just a Mickey I put in his drink, just like we used to in the joints. I never knew it'd kill him. Don't. <laughs> You're a brave kid, Lola. Now look, Ducky offered me a hundred grand to deliver you. Would you take a chance on me fighting it out with him for half of that? For 50 grand? Brother, where are we meeting him? O'Rourke's car was parked outside my apartment building where I had a hunch it would be. The two gunners picked us up at the door, unloaded my hardware, and marched us up the stairs.
Ducky opened the door of my apartment and waved us inside. Listen, Ducky. Listen, honey. You've got it all wrong, see? Keep the plant outside, you two. Ducky, listen to me. Eh, sit down. You too, Lola. Ducky, I swear I never said a word. I never talk, Ducky, even if they chop my head off. We'll take up your suggestion later. I got a conference on with Mr. Spade here. Bring the money? Don't crowd me. There's that other matter. The old lady. How about the old lady? I keep my word, Spade. You delivered the duck, okay? The way Jenny gave it out to O'Rourke was the old lady for the duck. But you ain't got no ethics. You see, you figured me wrong. I don't kill old ladies. You're gonna kill the duck. I ain't no old lady. No, you ain't. And you ain't getting any older. And neither are you, Spade. He wasn't kidding. He really meant to knock me over. And the gun he was going to do it with got ready to speak its piece. I'd made my play too strong. The way this type of gunsel thinks is simple and I'd guessed it right. If you pressure them, they go the other way by instinct. But what I hadn't figured was that this killer had a heart of lettuce. He was going to cut me down to protect your mother from me. How do you like that? I couldn't change my play now. The wheel was already spinning and so was my head. I tried to brace myself and waited for the blast. Every little moment. Oh, oh dear, I dropped the tray. Mrs. Perrin, what are you doing here? I was just making some coffee for the boys. Oh dear. I've broken your cups. That's okay, Mother. We'll take care of it. Bugsy, pick it up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bugsy. Well, I'm so glad you got my message, Sam. Didn't Teffy come with you? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I, I mean... Oh, I wanted to surprise you both together. I hope you don't mind my taking over the kitchen. It was so late and the boys were getting hungry... So I offered to make them coffee and hotcakes. Well, that was very nice of you. Uh, Mr. Morton, put that pistol down for a moment and... and help me move this table out of the room. Ah, oh, oh sure, Mother. Uh, thank you. Oh, we've had such a good time. <laughs> I've never been up so late in my life. Mr. Bugsy and I played a game called Blackjack, and I won $50. <laughs> wait till Effie hears about that. Yeah, wait till she hears. I suppose Effie will come with Miss Bundy. Bundy? Oh, yes. I, I remember that Effie said... You and she are often down at the office at police headquarters late at night, so I phoned there. Uh, Mother? Yes, Mr. Morton? Did you say you phoned the police headquarters? Why, yes, that's where Miss Bundy works. Mother, where did you tell Bundy? Well, just that you and the boys were here and that we were about to have some coffee and... She said just love to come up and join us, and I said do, and, and she said she would, with some of the boys. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? No, no, Mom, not at all. All right, boys. Why, I believe that's Miss Bundy now. When the smoke cleared away, Ducky Morton and his hoods were playing dead duck for keeps on my living room rug. And that rug had just come back from the cleaners, too. Dundee and the boys from Homicide took Lola Brent away with them. After it was all cleaned up, 
I found your mother out in the kitchen. Well, Sam, I just made another pot of coffee and... Oh, it's okay, Mom. It's okay. It's all over now. Oh, I, I know. I, I know. I, I've been holding this back. Oh, Sam, I, I've never been so frightened in all of my life. Oh. How does Effie stand it? You played it good, Mom. You played it real good. Did I? Was I as brave as Effie? Braver. And not only that, you got more brains. You've just listened to The Dead Duck Caper, a tale of Sam Spade. It was played by Bill Burke. Effie Perrin was played by Megan Knoll. Mrs. Perrin and Salty Hawkins were both played by Sherry Hawkins. Lola Brent was played by Emily Schneider. Guest One and Lieutenant Dundee were played by Sean Chevalier. Second Guest and Marty were played by Andrew Richards. First Goniff was played by Megan Kay. Second Goniff and Ducky Morton were played by Brant McKenz. Jenny the Juke was voiced by Allison Beach. Dennis O'Rourke and Bugsy were played by Brian Kapler. I hope you enjoyed our episode, and if you did, I encourage you to seek us out on Anchor or YouTube or any of your favorite podcasting services and like and subscribe and leave us a review. Until then, uh, this is Kelly Hogan with Quarantine Radio Theater saying goodbye. <laughs>